disease-spreading arachnids we know and loathe. While these pesky creatures may seem vile, they have many fascinating skills and tools. My name is Arlo. Please join me as we explore the secrets of the tick. This dog tick from Colorado is hungry. Although it has very poor eyesight, it is nonetheless able to move unerringly towards me in the hope of a blood meal. It does this by means of tiny chemosensory pits called Haller's organs, located in its first pair of legs. The tick occasionally pauses to wave these legs around, to catch wafts of moisture coming out of my lungs. The tick's awkward walk is accomplished by squeezing fluid into its legs. Inside its body are large, powerful muscles that pull the top and the bottom together. This is my primitive model tick. The plates represent the top and the bottom halves of the tick's shell. The fingers of the glove represent the fluid canals inside the tick's legs. So when the tick compresses the top and the bottom of its shell together, the fluid is forced into the legs, causing them to extend. Different areas of pressure inside the shell cause different legs to extend. Like all arachnids, ticks have eight legs, two pedipalps, and two chelicerae. The shield on the back of the head provides a stiff platform for muscle attachment. Ticks are in fact a type of specialized mite. The mites are typically much smaller. As we see on this lone star tick from West Texas, the chelicerae and the pedipalps fit together to form the nathosoma, the part of the tick devoted to biting and eating. The pedipalps sometimes have sensory function, but often their job is to arrange the skin of the host for easier piercing. If you think of your skin as a tick sees it, it's a tough, flexible membrane that's difficult to pierce. But, with the help of my pedipalps, I'm going to arrange the tissue and make a little lump in here so I can really tear into it. There, there's my blood meal coming out right now. Tick teeth come in multiple backwards facing rows on the end of the chelicerae. A stout tube called a hypostome conducts blood into the throat. A large muscular pouch called a pharyngeal pump helps pull the blood out of the host. Once the tick has dug its snout-like nathosoma into the host's skin, it secretes a tough, fast-drying cement from its salivary glands. This makes the tick much more difficult to remove. Even after they are pulled off, ticks can endure incredible damage. This deer tick from Steiermark in Austria has been pulled off and crushed by strong fingers yet it still clings to life. Ticks can stay attached for several hours and drink many times their own volume in blood. Nutrients are filtered out and the water is secreted through holes called stigmata. The engorged tick drops off and does its best to waddle to safety. Ticks transmit several diseases, notably Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Lyme's disease, and tularemia. For this reason, I'm not going to let this one bite me. I'm going to destroy it by dropping it in 190 proof rum. Incredibly, this does not kill the tick instantly. After two minutes, its struggles are somewhat enfeebled, but it is still very much alive. After five minutes, the tick is forcibly retired from a life of blood-sucking parasitism. It's not every day you find yourself staring into a tick's anus. But today, you're just that lucky. Thank you for your kind attention.